oh, hi. I didn't realize what time it was. Time for the service. I just cut out my Linda McKee apron, getting ready, uh, practicing for Thanksgiving dinner. It's an apron of lots of hearts and love. It isn't that what Thanksgiving is about. So just give me a minute here and we will continue. Hi, I'm Reverend Sharon Ketchum and welcome to Unity Spiritual Center of Lansing's COVID sanctuary, as I like to call that. We are here for a Thanksgiving message, and I want to start out today with a beautiful song by uh, David Roth. He's, he's sung at our church before. This is something that he wrote particularly for Thanksgiving. Um, I will say pre-COVID, you'll notice from some of the words, but I think it's a song you'll enjoy. Um, also, the words are on the open head, so I really invite you to sing at home. Get that gift of us together. So just take a deep breath, stand up if you want, um, keep deep breath, just sing it out. As we come around to take our places at the table, a moment to remember and reflect upon our wealth. Here's to loving friends and family, here's to being able to gather here together in good company and health. And may we be released from all those feelings that would harm us. May we have the will to give them up and get them gone. For heavy are the satchels full of anger and false promise. May we have the strength to put them down. May the light of love be shining deep within your spirit. May the torch of mercy clear the path and show the way. May the horn of plenty sound so everyone can hear it. May the light of love be with you every day. And may we wish the best for everyone that we encounter. May we swallow pride and may we do away with fear. For it's only what we do not know that we have grown afraid of and only what we do not choose to hear. May the light of love be shining deep within your spirit. May the torch of mercy clear the path and show the way. May the horn of plenty sound so everyone can hear it. May the light of love be with you every day. And as we bless our daily bread and drink our day's libation, may we be reminded of the lost and wayward soul and the homeless that we have in every nation. May we fill each empty cup and bowl. May nothing ever come between or threaten to divide us. May we never take for granted all the gifts that we receive. Being ever mindful of the unseen hands that guide us and the miracles that cause us to believe. May the light of love be shining deep within your spirit. May the torch of mercy clear the path and show the way. May the horn of plenty sound so everyone can hear it. May the light of love be with you every day. May the horn of plenty sound so everyone can hear it. May the light of love be with you. May the light of love be with you. May the light of love be with you every day. Thank you, David Roth. That was wonderful. Just really enjoyed that. Well, it is Thanksgiving week and uh, kind of interesting and different, huh, this Thanksgiving? <sighs> makes me think of some of the teachings of spiritual masters that, that talk about us. Sometimes we think that we live either moments of joy and, and gladness or moments of sadness and suffering. But in truth, we, what we live is in the moments in between. Because those only ex the extremes are there, um, they can only be appreciated if we have times when we're not there. It's kind of like a battery. Battery has a 
positive end and a negative end. And because of those differences, we get to have the power in the middle. So even though we may enjoy and prefer the positive end, the power really comes from having both ends of the spectrum. I mean, think about it. What would life be like? I got a little thing sticking up there. What would life be like if it was always joy? How would you know you were in joy? Or if your house was always filled with people and laughter, how would you know this was a wonderful thing? Because that would just be the norm. It would just be the norm. So something about our human nature, we kind of need these contrasts to, to really experience it, even though we prefer the positive. But the important thing is for us to know that experiencing what we don't prefer helps us to appreciate more what we do prefer, helps us to love more what we love and to love it even more, like to, be, to help us be grateful for those things that come into our life as those moments of joy and exuberance and happiness. It really helps us embrace the juiciness of life. And if you don't know what the juiciness of life is, I can give you, give you a visual. Think that you've just given a child a slice of watermelon. Now they don't get a dinner plate and sit down and take a knife and fork and cut it in neat little pieces and stick a little piece in their mouth. No, that hot summer day, they take that slice of watermelon and they put their face into it and they just eat it up, spit the seeds out, eat it up. And as they do that, the juice comes running down their face. It's all over their clothes. Their hands are sticky, sticky, sticky. That's the juiciness of life. It's messy, it's sticky, and it's so enjoyable. But only if we allow ourselves to get into the mess, to get into the juiciness. And when we do, when we allow life to be all that it is, we get to experience the fullness of life. We get to experience the gratefulness for life. And we get to experience a prayerful attitude in, in all that we do. It's, it's, a, it's not a time apart, but it's being in that idea of oneness, of realizing that it's all God, and ultimately it's all good, no matter what it feels like at the moment. Well, I know what I'm feeling in this moment, and that is, as I think about Thanksgiving, my mind kind of wanders back to Thanksgiving past. You know, growing up, I was in a four-generational household, and we had just the family for Thanksgiving was around 30 people. We had to go down to the basement. We put up um, plywood for tables. We put up plywood over the pool table to put all the food on. We'd go up and get our food and sit at the table. And it was chaos. But it, it wasn't just the dinner. It was a whole, I don't know, 24, 36 hour event. It would start, you know, the day before as gra great grandma and grandma and mom just cleaned the house. Yeah, sometimes I had to help. And then the turkey went in uh, on Saturday, on the night before, not Saturday night, Wednesday night. And uh, mom thought she had to cook it for 12 hours. It was always very dry, which meant we always needed a lot of gravy, but that's another story. And then, you know, everything's in cooking. And I remember I'd go outside so I could come back in the house to smell the turkey. Cause when you're with it all the time, you don't smell it. And I'd be getting so hungry. When are we going to eat? And then pretty soon they all started arriving. The family started arriving. And from this house, it was just busy. All of a sudden, it was just cacophony of noises and voices and kids running around and adults laughing and joking. And we would tell stories. And and I yeah, would remember people that weren't there. There'd be that, that little, you know, missing moment in our hearts. But it was just one of those very full, vibrant days that exhaust you. And then all this is going on. Then all of a sudden, it stops. At some point, everybody has left. And you sit down and there's this kind of satisfied feeling and where before you were hungry, now you're filled with turkey, where before it was loud and wonderful, now it's quiet and wonderful. And the house was neat and tidy and now it's a mess, but there's something satisfactory about that, that you know everybody was kind of enjoying the juiciness, just kind of really getting into it. Ah, <sighs> yeah. That's a complete life, the contrast, the fullness and the emptiness. That's where our life, our life is meant to be experienced in the full realm. It's not all one thing, it's everything. You know, remember Johnny Carson, you know, God rest his soul. Well, I remember one time, I still remember this. 
on the talk show one night, he said, Thanksgiving is an emotional holiday. People travel thousands of miles to be with family members they only see once a year and then discover once a year is way too often. Well, we all have family dynamics. We have those family members that help us grow. But more recently on CNN, an epidemiologist said, and this really touched me. They said that the good news is that next Thanksgiving is going to be fabulous the best ever. The bad news, well, this year Thanksgiving is going to suck. And that's the truth. That's the contrast. It's kind of like being, being taught about delayed gratification, that everything is instant, that sometimes we just, you know, not having what we normally have this year will make us appreciate next year so much because we'll have that contrast, the negative and the positive. Well, this, I want to use this as a kickoff for a series I'm going to be carrying through um, Advent all the way into um, year end, our burning bowl and, and a white stone ceremony. And that's sharing some teachings, the teachings of Abraham. Esther and Jerry Hicks wrote a book, Ask and It Is Given. And they talk about Abraham. Um, it's kind of a channeling uh, process, if, if you will. And Abraham explains that they are non-physical entities that remind us the truth of how the universe operates. And, you know, the wisdom that they share is nothing new. They're ancient truths. They are the laws in which the universe operates. But we only hear them when we're ready. So as I go through this series, I'm aware that all of us, even myself, will hear and learn and understand things maybe differently than somebody else, but it's what we're ready for at that moment. We each take our steps that are on our own spiritual journey, wherever we are on that journey as we go through. So I'm gonna start out with something I think is absolutely startling and you may go, ho oh, hum, 17 seconds. Hmm. Yeah, 17 seconds. Okay, what does that mean? Well, Unity's third principle is that our thoughts are creative. And Abraham tells us that 17 seconds of holding a thought in our mind starts a vibrational current out of our thoughts, a vibration, that's energy. And if we are able to hold on to that focus for another 51 seconds, I'm talking seconds here, for a total of 68 seconds, we have started a vibration within the universe that will lead into manifestation. So if we can carry that focus for that short time to start those thoughts going, we start that vibration strong enough to manifest in our life. Okay, that's step one. But step two, if we can repeat that process with that same thought, then of course, you know, we're going to want to think of things that thrill our soul, things that bring us joy and happiness, things on the positive end of the spectrum. If we can repeat that thought, the other thoughts that go through our minds, and um, perhaps these days more than normal, there are awful thoughts that go through our mind. What if, and, and fears and anxieties that go through our mind. But if we can keep repeating this precious thought, this juicy thought, this becomes then our dominant thought. And the other thoughts, the awfuls, the fears, the anxieties, do not take up residence. They just are merely travelers going through and we just allow them to go and that energy does not pick up that magnetism to draw into manifestation. Now, the universe is wonderful and that is totally non-judgmental. We each get to choose what our dominant thought is. We each get to focus on that that brings us what our hearts desires. And our thoughts equal vibration. We can measure. There are machines that measure. They see our theta thoughts, which are long, slow energy waves, and the alpha thoughts, which are shorter, and they go up and down deeper, and the beta thoughts. So knowing that energy cannot be created or destroyed, can only turn into, into something, a set of circumstances, a, an actual physical thing. E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light. This is what we are into that manifest creation process within our own lives. And I can tell you this, that our life experience and what we think and feel are always a vibrational match. The only difference is we're not always conscious about those thoughts that we are holding in mind, those thoughts that we allow to become our dominant thoughts through all things. So this process we're gonna enter into 
through Advent is really about waking us up to be conscious of our dominant thoughts, be conscious of what it is that we have decided to create within our life. And the exciting thing to me about this, this is not just some woo-woo ideas and how do you prove it, yada, yada. No, this is quantum physics. This is science. And it's, it's just wonderful how science and, and new thought spirituality have, have converged and converged more and more as we understand more of, of both sides of it. Einstein, who kind of came up with quantum mechanics as opposed to just quantum physics, says that God does not play dice. We know the universe, this orderly universe runs on very clear laws. We're just not always so clear about them. But what I will tell you is that the laws of the universe, the laws that are in play, the quantum mechanics of our life and this whole world, the universe around us are tilted towards well-being. That is the moving force. You know, there's a song about it. Love makes the world go round. Love, well-being, that propensity towards life. That is like the engine that moves through all these laws. They're always moving life, all creation, towards that sense of a greater well-being. So it's about us getting that nothing and no one is against us that the universe is for us, conspiring to support us, conspiring to love us, if you will. God loves us all. So taking a step further into the quantum world, this came up at our family meeting last week. We do a Zoom meeting every couple of weeks um, with my kids and siblings. And we got talking about quantum entanglement. I know, kind of a strange subject for a family meeting, but quantum entanglement says that when two particles are are interrelated, so closely interrelated, that even when they're separated, what happens here also happens here, even though they're distance, that they're, they are entangled. They have very active observing one affects the other. Um, and now, having told you that, consider the idea of holding that thought for 17 seconds, and then keeping that focus for another 51 seconds. We are entangling the ethers of the universe into our thoughts, into that creative formation. Wow, we are each involved in that quantum entanglement. Consider the idea that we know there is only one consciousness, the human consciousness, the life consciousness. We are entangled one with another. But let's just keep it simple for our own life and just get into that idea that these thoughts that we have are not just mere thoughts, these are the creations of our life experience. It's a wonderful guidance system, these laws that are operating around us. So when we deliberately choose a thought, take a moment to be conscious. How does that make you feel? Does this, does this thought make you feel better? If it is, keep it, focus on it, take it to the 68 and beyond. Let it become your dominant thought. Does that thought take the energy out of you? Does it unsettle you? Does it drain you of energy? Then let it go. Don't focus on it. But I will tell you this, that the more that we can entangle with that idea of appreciation and praise and feeling good and saying, thank you and I love you, we are screaming to the universe, I want more of this. I love this. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. I, can, I am ready to receive this good. I'm ready to be part of this good. I'm ready to really be that entanglement. We attract the things that we want to say thank you to. You and I attract into our lives the things that we want to say thank you to. So what a great idea to carry into this Thanksgiving season. And as we do that, I want to share a song with you that, um, we, it's kind of a traditional Thanksgiving song, if you will. Let me just go um, through this slide. It's called Come. Uh, we gather together. You probably sang it. Uh, it's sometime. Where are we go? Okay, here we go. Up. Oh, let me go back one. Okay, because I'm not going to sing it, but I'm just going to kind of chant it here for you because it's just, uh, it's been updated uh, to some Unity More style words. We gather together, declaring our blessings, enjoy and thanksgiving, embrace everyone, but do it virtually, affirming, progressing the truth as us expressing, 
sing praises and rejoice, for we know we are one. In laughing and loving and guiding and serving, we send out our light and our love so divine. In true celebration, we share appreciation. We're grateful for our gifts as we let our light shine. As David Ross sang, may the light shine upon you. Yes. So this Thanksgiving, a spiritual practice that I would um, offer to you, if you will, is one to savor the contrast. Yes, it's different this year. Yes, it is not the ones we dream of, but think of how, how great it's gonna make next year. We'll be so appreciative of that we took for granted. And from my heart, I say to you, be smart, be safe, be here for next year. Wear a mask, socially distance, keep wherever it is that you feel safe as you practice this holiday weekend. Entangled with gratitude, no matter how you're celebrating by yourself with some friends, just entangle, entangle, entangle with gratitude, with love, with deep appreciation. And most of all, be your fabulous self all year. Just keep on entangling with those things that make your heart sing. Thank you and happy Thanksgiving. Well, I wanna take a moment now to start a gratitude celebration here. Deepest gratitude from all of us at Unity Spiritual Center of Lansing to all of us who support this ministry, who keep it going to keep the lights on, even though we're not meeting in a sanctuary where everybody can gather, we have this sanctuary together right now, live in this moment. And deep gratitude as we can share our gifts to some wonderful organizations here in town that you've chosen, Punks with Lunch, who are blessing those without homes or homeless um, population here in the area, RISE, who supports those dealing with addiction, and the Sunrise Movement that supports our planet with their ecological programs. So thank you to each of them, and it was with great joy that deepest gratitude for the work you do that we get to share the gifts that we've received. And now I know that each of you have had incredible gifts this week. Some expected, some unexpected. Nothing else. You had beautiful fall days, Friday and Saturday. And so as we allow our heart to vibrate in that, as we hold for that 17 seconds of deepest appreciation, deepest gratitude, deepest love for what has flown into our life, let us affirm together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. I praise, give thanks, and am glad. And so it is. Yeah. Well, you can watch Unity On Demand as it fits your own timetable, or you can binge watch it all together. We're available here to you in three parts. Hope to see you in the other two parts. God bless. And now, as our tradition, our closing song, I Choose Love, I invite you to take the hand of someone next to you, if no one's next to you, take your own hand. Or if you got a, a furry creature there, give them a little hug. As we firm together that love. It is our choice to be juicy, to love. Peace in my life is growing because I choose love. Love's always present. It's what I'm made of I choose love We are a part of each other We are one One tie that binds us That can't be undone I choose